everybody, it's Zach. Welcome back to the Heroverse. Guys, we just got with, done with Riverdale, Season 6, Episode 17, called Let me just say, American Psychos. This episode was stupid. I could not stand it. The only parts of this episode I liked were Kevin's... Singing. Singing, because I love Casey Cott. So. Yeah, he's, he's a great singer. No doubt yeah, about it. Yeah, he's like... He... His singing voice shocks me like Cam says. The thing that's... that's what's going off of what you're saying is that... I just find it weird that they are still singing outside of the fact of it made more sense than when they were in high school doing shit. I just, I find it weird that they're singing outside of that. I just don't yeah, know what it is. Because they're done high school, they're done college. I just, I just don't find it entertaining. I just don't. Because mind you, they're teachers and stuff, and yet there's, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I just don't, I feel like I really wish we would have grew past the whole singing things unless it was just, it made sense. Which in this case, I guess I don't even know if it made sense why why Kevin was really singing in, in, in the position that he was singing because I feel like it still didn't make any sense. Um, I don't know. I just grew past the singing. It made more sense when you know when they, when the high school and stuff. It just made more sense. But as we've grown out of that, it's just I don't find it entertaining anymore. But you know, it's funny. Annie mentioned when she said the episode was called American Psycho. I was like, it can't be called American Psycho because it's a, that's a slasher movie. American Psycho. It's it's a classic with Christian Bale playing Patrick Bateman. I, I've seen the movie. I was like, there's no way they could, it's copyrighted. There's no way they could call this episode American Psycho. But it's called American Psycho, so that's how they got away with it. Um, yeah, I just did not like this episode. This might have been the episode I probably hated the... I probably... This might be my most hated episode of this season. I've hate, I hated this episode. There was only really two parts I really liked in this episode. Besides that, this episode was stupid. I found it pointless. I found it stupid. I felt like we were totally getting off track. Mainly with the whole, you know, Betty, uh, Veronica, and also uh, Agent Drake all trying to set up uh, Babylonium as, you know, a serial killer con to get Black, to get TBK to show up so they could capture him, set the trap for him. Also, uh, what's his face? Betty's brother was involved. Charles. Charles. I always forget that dude's name. But, you know, after, I'm, I'm just not sure how she can trust him after all the shit he's pulled. I found it dumb that he even, that character even came back after we thought he died. But I find it weird that she's just, you know, she was able to, like, Veronica in last episode was able to suck out the venom, like, the badness that was killing him because of that. Was, apparently, they specified that's what made him a bad dude was the, this, was this, was the badness within him was poisoning him. And then that was what was making him bad, which I found was stupid. I said when plot. he, I said he would heal the gene, but her house on his dad. Yeah. That piece his dad. Wait, what? I was going to say, doesn't he have a gene, but he doesn't because his house on his father. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if he has this serial killer gene or not. I don't, I don't think so. He but wouldn't because how else on his dad? I don't even think they that, that they were even going with it. I think that the fact that he just had badness within him, it wasn't the serial killer gene, but he just had badness within him and they acted and they made it sound like it was like, that was what was killing him. Like it was like a, it was this bad thing that was killing him. I found that stupid. I didn't like that. I didn't like how, again, you know, Betty is still wanting to be in, be in connection with, with, uh, Alice, after she's after Alice told Betty that she would be a terrible mother, I just found it weird that she would even want to keep living in the same house with Alice. I found that weird, but you know, in this episode, we're, we're really like they're all getting together to do serial killer con, and you know, they're going to make it '80s themed, um, like '80s club themed, like how it is in American Psycho, and they're 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 getting Kevin to do American Psycho performances at this serial killer con. Colonel Junior's having his own little like. Uh, booth talking about how they, you know, remove organs and stuff and how it is as like a, uh, what was Abby in NCIS? Like a, she's a, I, I forget, forensic scientist. a forensic scientist because that's what Colonel Jr. is. And I'm just like, I, I, I'm just like, this is ridiculous. One that we're totally getting off track of where has TBK been all this time? I told Annie, like what, the last time we saw TBK was when Betty said to Archie, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna get him out of Riverdale. I'm going to loop around and I'll be back. Bro has been gone for like seven, like six episodes. Majority of the season ever since that one episode where like Betty tried getting him out of Riverdale. And really, he's not even supposed to be our main focus villain. It is Percival. Percival. So why the hell are we so focused on the villain that's been gone all this time that took a year and a half, must have done like 15 stops before he got to, back to Riverdale, after he tried, you know, after he made, you know, uh, after Betty made him follow him, follow her back to, back, you know, made, made her follow her outside of Riverdale, but then, of course, she looped her back around, so, of course, he would show back up in Riverdale. I just shouldn't have taken that long if we really wanted to make him a key point villain to bring back in the main source of how we have our other main villain, Percival. So, because he's the really main villain, but if we were going to have TBK show back up, 
It should have been a lot sooner. So I found this episode very pointless on the fact that one, they're 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 getting all together to do this the serial killer con. I thought it was stupid again. The whole you know you know you know like the eighties themed you know uh you know you know uh you know what is it uh Kevin doing the whole Patrick Bateman singing thing at the serial killer con. I found that to be like why are we doing this? Why are we doing like making this some sort of rave party to capture a serial killer? I was like, that, in my way, I was like, is that even a smart thing to do that? Because in, in reality, he didn't show up until like the last, the last thing. And that was really stupid. The, the moment where like he does show up and he shows up literally in a tank top and he still has his mask on. But then also, yo, know, Bevy thinks that he is on stage about like literally strangling Kevin, Kevin with a plastic bag. And I was like, okay, like, you know, she ran up, you know, tackled him, but it turned out it wasn't TBK. It was actually Dr. Curdle Jr., a part of, you know, Kevin's performance, a part of the American Psycho performance. But Kevin didn't tell anybody that, it, that he was going to do yeah. that. He didn't say, like, to anybody that he was going to... He didn't tell Veronica. He didn't tell Betty. He didn't tell... Agent Drake. Like... Tony or anything. He didn't tell anybody that was in, that was really that and brought him on to begin with. Oh, we, you know, you're a part of us, our capture of TBK. So whatever, I need you to do this or whatever. So, you know, you can be a part of this thing where like, you know, TBK comes in here. It's a trap we have for him. But yeah, Kevin didn't think to himself, okay, well, I'm going to have TBK a part of my performance. Not real TBK, just, you know, Dr. Curl Jr. dressed up as TBK. But let me just not tell Betty. Let me not tell Veronica. Let me not tell, you know, Agent Drake. So that way when Betty did, so that way, oh, I don't know, let's say Betty wouldn't tackle this fake, you know, TBK, but Kevin got angry at Betty because you're like saying, Betty, what are you doing? You know, Dr. Carl Jr. is a part of my performance. You know, like this was all a part of my performance and doesn't end up like he gets petty about it and doesn't want to finish his last, you know, performance and the last night of they have of the serial killer con when all seriousness is he should have told Betty and all them that they were going to have, he was going to have a fake TBK on stage. So really it's his own fault that of him not telling Betty about a fake TBK you know what I mean? Because, you know, she was just trying to save him, thinking it was real TBK, but he was all angry about it. Like, I just found that stupid. I found that not to make any sense. I found it also dumb that the reason I really don't want to watch this episode along with it is the fact that, you know, we saw the whole, you know, I like I told everybody, when Agent Drake first showed up and, you know, we had that episode where you clearly she had, you know, I, I could see that she had feelings for Betty. And then we saw in the promo in this episode that, you know, she was going to be talking to Veronica saying, oh, do you have feelings for Agent Drake? And I, I was so pissed at the fact of, oh my God, these writers really going to screw us Birchie fans over. And, 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 you know, bringing a character that we don't even know anything about this character that they brought in. And and also ruining the fact of ruining Betty's character and the fact that she, Betty's already trusting this Adrian Drake girl, where, which Betty knows nothing about her. For all we know, she could be a serial killer. And it's not very like Betty to just trust someone and tell this person about how, you know, Veronica has abilities, how she has abilities, how Cheryl has abilities. And, you know, she barely knows nothing about this, knows nothing about Agent Drake. Because as we all know, Betty's had people that, you know, she's she's reg for regretted trusting or whatever. So just it's very out of context, out of nowhere. She just trusts this girl that she barely knows. And already, like, I thought really is, and then, and then this episode, Betty's like, kind of like, you know, um on the fence of if, you know, her and Archie actually match, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you know, her and Agent Drake match more when it comes to on paper than her and Archie. And pretty much she questions that in this episode of, oh, are me and Archie actually meant to be? Or is it more that, you know, I need him more than he needs me? And all, all for the fact that Agent Drake made her feel that way because we could, Agent Drake, conf you know, confesses her feelings to Betty saying, oh, I like you. Is it really serious what you have going on with your boyfriend? It seems like, you know, he was kind of, you know, weirded out by the, about, about like when we were talking about, you know, how serial killers work and stuff because they had like little panels where Alice ended up showing up and, you know, you know, and Betty was talking about how she got captured by TBK and just all that crap, and, you know, you know, and just, you know, that's, that's it episode. just, it just didn't make any sense that like, really like one, like, w like the writers were literally trying to make it seem like, oh, this girl, they're making it. So this girl comes in, likes Betty and then, and then, you know, and the girl confesses her feelings to Betty and, it, and Betty questions every, all the, her, her relationship with Archie. That really annoyed me because I was really afraid that they were really gonna screw us Barchi fans over the fact that they literally said the season, you know, like, you know, we're finally have Barchi. They don't really have a, like a, like, a, like, they don't really have any titles for it. They don't, they're not saying that they're dating. They're not saying that they're boyfriend and girlfriend. Weirdly enough, I don't know why, but it's like they're together now. And I, I was afraid that the writers were really gonna screw us over by this one girl coming in to screw up everything. Especially, you know, me, the, you know, Agent Drake, I feel like is, she's, she just seems very sus to me that she's a serial killer. 
because the, her connection, the, her interest in Betty, her, I'm, I'm thinking, I also said, my, my one of my theories is I'm thinking, you know, she could be Betty's kind of kryptonite on the fact that, you know, she might have similar abilities to Betty and maybe she was screwing up Betty's abilities, how, you know, Betty wasn't able to see who, yeah. who was like a, a bad person or not. I feel like also, I, even in this episode when she, you know, she was like, you know, trying to say, you know, you know, you know, we, we, uh, we, you know, we have a lot in common, Betty, you know what I mean? And, her aura though. Yeah, but I remember her oars were all screwed up because I felt like it was also because how I, my theory was because Agent Drake was kind of near her and stuff and maybe it was kind of screwing up her abilities and things. I don't yeah, know she what. Thought, what uh, it, yeah, she thought Dag would have the. Yeah, had the, the gene, serial killer gene, but there's actually. Juniper. Ju uh, Juniper. Uh, Juniper. Juniper. So that, that's why I'm like, I feel like there's something sus about Agent Drake. Also, on the fact, I would not be shocked if, like, Agent Drake, like, had a connection with TBK and, went, and like, wanted to be closer to Betty to find out what TBK's fashion fascination was with Betty or something. I don't know. I just have not been liking this Agent Drake character. One, because it's not... I don't like it because the the, the way the writers are writing Betty just trusting Agent Drake when it's, like, that's just... is not Betty's character. She wouldn't just trust somebody like this after all the stuff she's encountered. I don't buy it. We, we've seen that, you know, she's always been a detective about things. She really hasn't trusted anybody. And she's regretted when she did trust people. So I find it weird that the writers just expect us that she's trusting Agent Drake. And, you know, and, you know, and the writers were kind of like, you scared me a minute when, again, when I really thought Betty was going to, like, break up with Archie to be with Agent Drake. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. She just met this girl. What the hell? Um, on top of Agent Drake being invited to Cheryl, uh, no, to uh, well, Tony's... Uh, you know, bachelor, bachelor, bachelorette party. Yeah, her, you know, her, uh, her bridal shower. No, was it was a bachelor, bridal shower, or bachelor party, or whatever. Bachelorette party. Well, yeah, whatever. That was ridiculous. Again, Betty just met this girl, and I was like, "There's an exception for Heather because, again, Cheryl's known Heather since they were that, like that was our first love. That made sense." But the fact, again, you don't, no one really knows this Agent Drake lady, but everybody, it seems that the writers make it sound like, oh, Betty knows her good enough to have her come to her friends, you know, that she's had for years, you know, uh, bachelor party and all that stuff. Like, that just didn't make any sense to me. Is that like, how is anybody okay with that? It just made more sense because she, that Tony invited Cheryl and invited Heather. Because Cheryl knew, uh, because Tony knew a little bit about Heather when Tony and Cheryl were dating. That made more sense, which also I'll let you talk about how Cheryl acted in this episode, which really pissed me off as well. It seems like the really the writers really regressing that character when it comes to the writing of okay, her so, character development. So Cheryl was trying to drive a wedge between Tony and Fangs because she's the one trying to get married or whatever. And then she did a spell with Kevin. Which I was pissed at Kevin for doing that, that because that's not like Kevin to just be okay with doing something like that. Because. I don't know. It didn't really drive a wedge between Tony and Fangs. It's because the wedge was baby Anthony. Maybe Anthony got sick. Yeah. And that could have killed him. Kevin could have killed his own child. And so Kevin could have killed his own child. Not even that. Along with Cheryl uh, helping him. Not even that. It's the fact that Cheryl did not know what she was doing with the magic. So the, I just found it very like this is like if Cheryl had magic back in season like let's say two or season one. And that's just, we've seen how Cheryl can, you know, she gets to the point where, like, you know, she, when she gets angry about something, she tries to sabotage things. And that's exactly what she tried doing. She was angry that, you know, Tony, you know, uh, told, you know, Cheryl that she was getting married and she wanted, you know, her to come to her, you know, party. bachelor party. And, you know, Cheryl did not take that well. And then she ended up wanting to cast a spell, like Annie just said, to have, you know, Fangs and Tony, you know, have a wedge between them, which again, could have killed. She said, one, she didn't know the, 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 the basis of the spell. She could have killed Tony. She could have killed Fangs. She, hell, she almost killed baby Anthony. It's just, this is so the acting of how Cheryl, like, uh, like uh, on, on, in Cheryl season one and season two, like just so angry, she would sabotage something and she'd be, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? And just, you know what I mean? And try to, you know, be Cheryl bombshell. I just find it like Cheryl's grown so much. I found it just out of character that she wanted to do something like this. Because again, Cheryl has not cared at all about hoping, you know, because she brings up that, you know, I was always hoping that me and Tony would get back together. But really, I have not seen that from your character that you, you know, you wanted to get back together with Tony. It's like you, you've known Tony and Fangs have been together for how long? You had to know eventually they were going get, to get, like, get married. Hell, they had a kid together. I just found it weird. And also, you have your, your long lost first girl, like first, you know, love back in your life. 
and you guys are technically dating and out of nowhere, you're just going to forget in this moment that you even are with your first love and just, and, and go out of your way, cast a spell acting like you're, you're pining for Tony when you're already with your, your long lost first love. That just made no sense to me in a writing perspective of the fact that she's already with somebody else and clearly she's not been focusing on Tony anymore. So I just found that stupid writing. I mean, also, when the moment we're like, again, remember Heather said, oh, well, do you want to talk about, you know, how your yeah. ex-girlfriend is getting married and stuff? And she just went out all old Cheryl saying, oh, why do you think I care? And it was all rude to Heather. I just found that stupid, too. I was like, why wouldn't she just... I found it because how much Cheryl's grown. I felt like she would have just talked about it to Heather without being all snippy with, you know, you know to Heather. I just found that so out of character. Because, again, we've seen Cheryl's character grow. So it's like they're, they're, they 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 want her to grow, but then they keep making her act like how she used to be in season one and season two in the earlier seasons. I hate that. It's like what's the the whole point is character development. That's what you're trying to show us. But when you guys make it make her act like how she used to act in season one and season two, it's like then what's the point? You guys keep affecting her character development and you keep regressing the character development. They do it with who else do they do it with Annie that I've talked about multiple times on this channel? Um, it's a dude you like. I like. Yeah. Come on, Annie, you know. Who have I been so angry at? On one of the dude characters. On Riverdale? Yes. Come on. I'm shocked. It's your boy Reggie. Your boy uh -huh. Reggie flip-flops more more than a fish out of water. And the fact of it is is that they try to do character development with him, but then they keep making him go back to the same jerk that we always know. And they, I don't know what they do with these two characters only, it seems like. just It's always usually Reggie and it's always usually Cheryl that they're doing this with. And it frustrates me. I've just been really frustrated with this. On top of the fact of like, you know, you know, again, I don't know how, again, I don't know if Agent Drake has any abilities. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm not taking any off, anything off the table where she might, and maybe she's the reason that Betty's been having trouble with her abilities. I'm not playing at the fact also she might have well, no connection is. To, well, TB, to TBK, because I found it weird how easy it was. Well, that, as soon as um, Agent Drake came in, Betty, Betty's ability... When she's been getting close to Betty, her powers have been getting iffy. Yeah. On top of this, it's like... Uh, it, killing... What was the point of bringing TBK back when you killed him so easy? And I swear to God, these writers were trying to say, oh, that wasn't actually Hammy there again. They tried to do something like that again, because remember, we saw... We thought we actually saw a TBK... When it was that dude that was in the house with Archie that had the first nugget of palladium yeah. that was on Archie's, you know, uh, construction crew. And we thought that was actually TBK and, it, and then the dude ran off and we didn't know if it was actually TBK or not. And then we actually get TBK again in this episode and then we have him actually get shot in, in Betty's house. And it's like Betty never takes off the mask. We don't know if that was if that the dude that left, you know, that, you, that pretended to be a part of Archie's crew or not was actually TBK or not. We still don't know who really TBK is because Betty did not unmask him. We didn't see it. So it's like, are, are, there, are there, is that the way the writers trying to say that, oh, TBK, that might actually not have been the real TBK? Because I'm done with this whole, oh, is it the real TBK or is it not the real TBK? That villain has been trash. It started out as a good villain when, you know, we saw Betty and, like, yeah. you know, when we first caught up with Betty after high school and, you know, she she told, you know, we, we found out she got captured by TBK and this was a serial killer. It was interesting. But then they totally forgot about that character until lately this, until the one episode where, like, he was in Riverdale and then Betty let him out of Riverdale and then he showed up again, year, like, 10,000 years later, honestly, for how long you took the loop back around to Riverdale when it took Betty like that to get out of Riverdale, loop around, but... TBK has been nowhere to be found until this episode, which I think, as again, is crappy writing. Um, for you know, for writers that want TBK to be, to, to be like a big villain that they want to be bring back, they should have brought him back sooner and should have actually made them do some serial killing things and some actually interesting villain things. But again, it's like, why are we focused on this dude when the real villain is Parzival? And for a second, Archie in this episode and Tabitha are kind of a part of the whole you know, Babylonian, um, yeah. you know, thing for a minute. And I was concerned, like, oh my God, are, are the two only, are, are these two only characters that are focused on Parzival, are they really going to get sucked into this other bullshit? But thank God the writers, they, they had them important to that stuff for a minute, but then they got them back to the real task at hand, Tabitha and Archie. They are literally the saviors of this show right now on focusing on Parzival and the real problem. Because everybody else is doing side missions, like it's GTA, and it's just been pissing me off. So I really hope, like in like the ne next episode, they bring Jughead out of the bunker. Yeah. Ju I I also, I can't believe 
Archie, because they had the moment where Archie was talking to Tabitha, like, how oh, I was Jughead and all that stuff. And he's like, she's like, oh, he's still trying to close the door and trying to, you know, stop all these people from, you know, or he's still trying to close the door in his head to have all these, all the voices stop in his head. How does Jughead and Tabitha and Archie still not know the only one that's been capable to even get into his head is Percival. The writers. I don't know because what Percival is up in the had, writer's room. Percival had his beanie. Percival had his ring. Percival had his jacket. Had and his I shirt. understand that that uh, like our, Jughead might not know that he had those things to get in his head because clearly he didn't need those things before to get in the Jughead's head. Remember when you know he was trying to get? Remember in the first one of the episodes where we saw like Jughead yeah. and Percival first meet, and Jughead was in his head, and yeah. Percival sensed that he was in his head and got in his head. He didn't need any things then. So it's like, why can't Jughead realize that Parzival's the one that did that to him? Parzival's the one that opened his door. Why can't Tabitha know that? Why can't Ar Archie know that? It's like, that's the writing that just, it, they would know that. Because the, they, the writers have specified in the other episodes that he's the only one in Riverdale to do what Jughead's capable of. So why are we just ignoring that? Also, we didn't even see Reggie in this episode. I'm not even sure what he's doing. I don't even know where Reggie was in this episode. I just realized he wasn't in this episode now. I have him lost that I, I, Yeah. Uh, honestly, I don't know wh what's going on. All I know is that, w like, and what's going on when Archie and Tabitha do get back to what's going on? They they, they promise, you know, um, Archie promises his old crew so they stop working on Parzival's, you know, ghost train that, oh, you guys can have free food at Pops. And I was like, they're set. There's no way in hell that even they're even going to be convinced to go back to work with Parzival after they get free food at Pops. Because You're set for your they, good. They have pops they made they made the um what was jim called um the al royale they turned that into pops which i think is badass i think it's a little better than where the original location was all um, i know though is, don't ever say that. i think it's true though all i know though is that i find it weird though when when parzival did come in because i guess out of nowhere now he needs to have the the, the ghost train done before the, uh, the, I think he said lunar eclipse or something. Like he has to do it on an eclipse or some bullshit, which the writers failed to to mention that earlier in his plan. Like that came out of nowhere. Why are you now telling us now in like the last, like the the the, the second to last episode yeah. or whatever that the, before the finale, the yeah, time. yeah, that oh he now needs an eclipse while his and also needs his ghost train made at the time the, this eclipse comes. That makes no sense. That's stupid. a big plot hole. Stupid. And all, but the biggest stupidest thing of all, though, this episode is how Fangs totally forgot because Tony told Fangs Parzival is able to get in your head and control you. Focus on something that it keeps you tethered, like Baby Anthony. He said that to Archie when Archie warned him about Parzival. But yeah, so, like uh, Fangs totally forgot and was able to get manipulated by Parzival and was able to get sent out of the room and work back on the the the, the tracks. To his ghost train. And then Archie, Tabitha, uh, I think it was just Archie and Tabitha. No, Tony was And Tony had to all go and, and you know, and, and go sing a song so they all remembered all the workers that, you know, they're doing this, you know, they're doing this, you know, uh, work to put food on the table for their families, even though, again, they already had offered, got offered free food. So I'm shocked that they were even able to be controlled because that was their, 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 their main source of of why Parzival was able to mind control them is the fact that they already were desperate on the fact that they wanted to put food on the table for their families, but now that that's already got taken on the table with them getting free food from Pops, how were they able to get mind controlled? Yeah. It's like, there are so many plot holes here that I've just, I'm honestly, I'm so glad I only have, we only have one more episode next week. Cause I literally, no, I've, I've, I've come to the point of that these, the, me talking about the show upsets me because how bad the rating is. It, it frustrates me. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't find it. And I, I don't find it, you know, I, I, I take no happiness and me like talking bad about the show that I once liked a lot, but it's like, at this point, I'm just tired of the bad writing. And I'm so glad again, we only have one more episode next week. And then I'm just done because I just, I'm honestly, I was talking to Annie after this episode because I was even going to watch next season. You know what I mean? Just, you know, just even watch it. Even though I was going to read it, I was just going to watch it. But now at this point, honestly, especially if, if Agent Drake carries over in the next season, even though I just don't like that character because of, because of the way they've made, the way they have written Betty's character to like, to, to like have this character 
and the way that this one character is kind of screwing up all the writings of all the other characters, honestly, and all, just also the bad writing in general, I don't think, like, I'm even going to watch next season. And the only, and I told Annie, like, because originally I was before, but I told Annie the only way I'd, I'd possibly watch next season is because I'm really rooting and grasping that we're going to see a scene with Betty and Archie getting married, having a family, and getting a house together. That's what I want. And I was really afraid when I knew that Agent Drake had the feelings for Betty. I, I thought I thought these writers had been so bad lately. I could totally see them bringing... They brought this girl in for a reason to break up Archie and Betty. And I was so afraid that that was what's going to happen. But I love how Veronica came in the clutch and told Betty, do not do anything stupid. You know what I mean? Like, do not like, go, go, go to that level. Do not go that far. And just keep it professional and just talk to Archie because that's how I screwed up everything with my past boyfriends and things. Do not do this. Talk to Archie. And she did. And you know what I mean? And Archie said, you'll wait, wait to talk about this until you're done capturing TBK and then we'll talk about this. And they talked about it and then that's when he gave her the, the, the second great part. Because I didn't talk about the first great part yet of what I liked about this episode. But the the the, the first the, the second great part, I guess the first great part, the moment I've been waiting for and the, a lot of us sports fans have been waiting for is the moment where Archie and Betty say I love you to each other and that finally happened in this episode. I don't think it's happened before because the, the one of the directors or writers of the show, I think it's the director, came out saying this is, we're going to get the, uh, the final, the final uh, like I love you moment that we've all been waiting for between Archie and Betty and we got in this episode where like Archie is saying I love you Betty says I love you too and like you know Archie gives you know Betty the thing where you know, like Betty's like I don't know if you know this is gonna work out because you know I feel like I am bad or whatever like she said something like that like what'd she uh, say I don't remember she said like oh like you know I feel like um I, I I am bad like TBK I feel like I am bad like you know like how my on what my father made me and stuff like that and he's like you're not bad Betty and you reminded her of a moment where like a a baby bird got injured fell out of the nest and she nursed it back to health and stuff saying like you know don't forget that you are good you always try to focus on the bad but you are good and you know, told her I love you and then she said I love you back that big moment that we all been waiting for and that kind of convinced her of the fact that you know they do belong together and she was wrong about the fact that she thought she wasn't that you know she needed Archie more than Archie needed her and she was afraid that Archie would look at her in a different way because how she thinks of herself how she is feels like she's bad like you know how like her father was and how TBK was um so I'm, I, even though I, I even though I keep saying to myself I told Annie I don't know why she thinks she's bad because she's not trying to kill her friends like like and she's not trying to kill people like that so I I, I just I, I don't know I, I found that weird but I can understand why she felt that way because you know she was getting groomed by her father, which was the Black Hood. And of course, you know, TBK tried to convince her that they had a connection together. So I can understand why she felt that type of way that she felt like, oh my God, she felt like she was bad. But I'm just happy that Archie said, you know, that you're not, you have to, you have to see the goodness within you. And that was just a really great scene on top of, what was it, Cheryl and Heather? I'll mm -hmm. let you talk about that, what I liked about that. You can talk about it. Um, I don't like that them together. I don't like that character at all. You don't like Heather? I like Heather, I like the character. Um, I like, you know, cause again, I do think it was a, gr I, I do, th I like that character a lot because I love the, us learning more about Cheryl having a first love and us finding out about that and, you know, and us finally getting to meet her and also the connection that, you know, she has. It also brings in a great connection to the fact that, you know, she is, she got trained in a witch coven and stuff. So that way, you know, she has something to teach Cheryl on top of them, you know, uh, on top of them, you know, being each other's first love and they're rekindling their first love and actually be, like, be, you know, being in a relationship now, which I think that that's them. They officially are in a relationship by the end of this episode where it's like they went out to dinner or went out on a date and, uh, you know, they're like, oh, you know, this is Cheryl's like, this is the best time that I've, I've had in a very long time. And, you know, we see, you know, when they're, when they're, when they're going, uh, going to, you know, have sex and shit, we end up seeing a painting, which of course is Cheryl and Heather when they were kids and stuff with, you know, them, you know, that just like signature, signifying their love that they've had and how it's lasted for years, which I thought was a good kind of like, you know, foreshadowing. Um, but yeah, honestly, like those are the only two mo best moments of this episode was again, Archie and Betty finally saying, I love you to each other. And also again, Cheryl and Heather kind of and with the picture signifying how their 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 love has lasted through all the troubles that they've had um so I don't know I I just did not like this episode I, re I just really thought it was bad the writing them trying to do the serial killer con especially that one stupid dude that was a fan of the black hood and wanted Betty oh to sign way. his knife 
Oh no, wanted Betty to to be Betty. Wanted Betty to be no. uh, her first kill no. or whatever. Yeah. To, because she's like, oh, because he said, oh, well, you're one of them or whatever. Like, like that's why I wanted you to. When I, that's why I wanted me to be your first kill. And it's like, dude. And then he comes back again with Hal's gun. I'm like, where is Bro getting this? Like. Like, uh, serial killers are us? Like, where is he buying this shit? Like, where is he getting this? How is he able to get Hal's murder shit? Shouldn't that be him under lock and key? See, again, plot holes. And, you know, I feel like Riverdale is, like, the master, is, like, the is the master of plot holes. It's, like, the definition of plot holes is Riverdale. Yeah. Um. Other than that, guys, honestly, I'm really curious to know what you guys thought of this episode because I, I've been hating. I hated this episode. It's probably my... my, my my most hated episode of the season. I've hated the season probably more than any season of Riverdale. I hate, and I, I'm shocked because I initially started loving the season when we came back when I thought when I found out they were going the supernatural route and the full comic book route of them getting powers and things. But then it totally Riverdale found a way. The writers found a way to make us hate the season again. This isn't for everybody that hate the season. This is just my personal opinion. I mean, not liking the season. I do think this is probably the worst season of Riverdale. I don't know how you feel about it, Annie. Do you think this is the worst season, or like, what would you? I say? don't know. Really, you don't know? Like, you don't think this is like what? Like, personally, out of all the seasons we've had of Riverdale, I don't would know. You say this is the... I mean, there's there's been episodes and there's been that have been bad. I don't know. I can't just like pick one season that's been bad. I just can't. Okay, well, yeah, I I could say that in in full confidence that this is the worst season we've had. And I don't think next season will be any better. So I'm personally up in the air. I'm going to see how this last episode is, even though I'm just, I have no hope in the last episode of it e being even good. But um, I'm fully convinced that I'm most likely not even going to watch next season. Honestly. And uh, I might watch the episode, which I, I bet you, if anything, they'll wait to hold off on Betty and Archie getting married and having kids and having a place, and it'll be like a montage in the last episode. I bet you of next season, it's gonna be like the last episode we see that, if not like the third to last of the ep the third to last episode of the season or something or whatever. Like the like two, you know what I mean? I bet you it'll be like one and one one of the three episodes before, like you know what I mean, of the of like the last part of, of of season seven. I bet you. I bet you we won't even see any of that in the beginning of season seven. I'd be shocked if we did. Um. And I at least hope that's what the writers give us because that's literally what I'm holding out for. And, and I, I, I'm seeing all this crappy writing. I'm holding out to see Betty and Archie get married, have kids, and have a and have a and have a house. That's what I've been wearing, waiting for. Um, and that's what's what my drive is throughout this crappy writing. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I want to know what you what you guys thought of this episode. I want to know where you guys think this is gonna go in, in like for the finale next week. Um, also, like, yeah, let me know. Do you guys think this is the worst season of Riverdale we had? Do you guys think that, are you guys even excited for season seven for how this season has been? Um, and yeah, just let me know what your thoughts and theories are down below. Let me know what you, how you guys think about my theories about Agent Drake. Do, do you guys see what I'm seeing about, about her being sus and what's her interest in, in Betty? Why is, and, and what is it with the writers making Betty just trust Agent Drake out of nowhere after Betty, that's not like Be Betty's character, just to trust someone she doesn't even know? Especially, why would, I, also it's not like Betty to just tell Agent Drake about Cheryl having abilities, Veronica having abilities, her having abilities. I'm, I'm pretty sure she probably told about Archie and Jughead as well. I mean, hell, probably. I mean, Sherry, the, like, uh, Sherry the invited her, a person she barely knew to Tony's bridal shower, which I thought was weird. Um, but yeah, honestly, I'm just not messing with this season and I'm probably not going to mess with next season. But yeah, guys, again, here, if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, post notifications, like this video. I'd love to have you guys here, part of the fam, a part of the channel. We're all about spreading love, positivity, and motivation. I know it's not, it feels like I'm not spreading positivity about the show. When it comes to a bad show, you guys know how it is. I tell it like it is when a show is bad. It's just, again, it's my opinion. I'm really curious to know what your opinion is on, on the season. Um, but yeah, guys, that was the video. Uh, we hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.